This is the Tom Hartman Program. And welcome back. Mark in Seattle. Hey, Mark, what's on your mind today? Hey, Tom, I have a report on the high casualty rates among journalists in the Israel-Gaza war. Oh, it's Mark Taylor Here Canfield. Democracy Watch News, we've been keeping track of these numbers, and it's proving to be the most dangerous conflict for journalists since uh, the Committee for to Protect Journalists started keeping statistics three decades ago. Right. So as of today, 88 journalists and media workers were confirmed dead, 83 Palestinian, two Israeli, and three Lebanese. 16 journalists were reported injured, four journalists are missing, and 25 journalists have been arrested. In addition to the Committee to Protect Journalists, um, they also reported that on January 18th, their statistics show that at the start of 2024, there were 320 journalists imprisoned worldwide because of their work. And CPJ called it a, quote, disturbing attempt to smother independent journalists. It's a very hard year for journalists, Tom. More than a third of the journalists in jail were in China, Myanmar, and Belarus. Israel is tied with Iran for the sixth place on that list. Each of the 17 that were held in Israel at the time of the CPJ census were Palestinians arrested in the West Bank since the start of the war. Twelve of the 17 non-local journalists who the Committee to Protect Journalists says are in prison throughout the world were being held in Russia. And they include two U.S. citizens, Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gerskovich and Alsu Kermashiva of uh, Radio Free Europe and Radio Liberty, both of whom are being held in pretrial detention. You can get more information by going to democracynews.org, our nonprofit news organization. But um, it, there, people should be also alerted that Russia has just declared Radio Free Europe and Radio Liberty as an undesirable news organization. So it's basically been banned in Russia at this point. Oh, interesting. So the crackdown on journalism all around the world continues, but it's it's particularly bad right now in Gaza. And uh, uh, it, 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 is there evidence that the Israeli Defense Force, the IDF, the, their military has been targeting journalists in Gaza, intentionally killing them? The Committee to, re- to Protect Journalists and Reuters approached the Israeli government on that issue. The only response they got was that the journalists lives could not be protected in the in Gaza, that there is no guarantee that journalists um, uh, will be protected there. So they're not saying that they're specifically targeting them. They're just saying that, you know, uh, you that well, there is I, no I guarantee. Doubt, that I would doubt that they would protected. own up to it. But, uh, but he, there have definitely been news organizations whose uh, press offices have been attacked. Uh, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, we know that. Yeah. yeah, this is really unfortunate. And what's the state of the press in the United States right now, Mark? The United States is currently ranked 45th in the world in terms of press freedom on the World Press Freedom Index by Reporters Without Borders. That's Mm -hmm. a story that no one will cover. Not even most progressive media will even touch that issue, Tom. One of the most censored stories in the country and one that I continue to work on daily, uh, lobbying our political representatives and other uh, senior editors at media across the country, trying to get them to own up to this fact so that we can take responsibility as journalists, editors, publishers, uh, and change the situation. Unfortunately, um, most of the media in the United States refuses to even report it. It's just like the story doesn't even exist. Amazing. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Tom. Yep. Keep up the good work. You too. Good talking to you. 20 minutes past the hour, 19 and a half minutes past the hour. We'll be back in 60 seconds with more of the news of the day. And-